I was thinking about, uh, I'm not sure what made me think about it, but I was kind of reminiscing about my sophomore year of high school. And uh, we had a, uh, a new choir teacher named Lauren Pontaine. And he thought, uh, he had, uh, he seemed fresh out of college. And he thought that he could get everyone really excited about music. And for those that were already excited about music, um, wow, was he an awesome teacher. But to the ones who weren't really that excited about music, like some people would just take choir because they thought it would just, oh, it's just an easy course. They just, just an elective, sure, that that's cool. You know, a lot of people would take it for that reason. And man, it, it didn't go over well with them at all. He, he couldn't keep them in, interested at all. But the ones who were interested, man, he, he, he was awesome. And uh, yeah, he, he, only was, he was only there for a year. Um, but I remember this. He, he uh, started this other morning choir where it's not really a, a uh, it's not a regular class. And so you could only get like a half a credit for it or something like that. It was, but uh, it was before the rest of the classes. So it was like at seven in the morning and, uh, and most of it was focused on jazz. So we called, you know, the jazz choir. And for complex songs, we had one person per part. And I was, uh, I was b doing bass too. But I was always really good at the, at the, uh, the scat solos. And, uh, but didn't have that much of an opportunity to do those. But uh, um, a scat solo is not, it has nothing to do with shit. It has to do with improvisation or something that, almost sounds like improvisation, you know, you know, whatever, that was, what scale was that? I don't know what scale that was, anyway, um, it was just weird for that to just suddenly come out, I don't know, I, it was a weird scale, um, but to be able to just kind of do an improv sounding thing on top of uh, music, sort of like how people will will come up with a something on the guitar, you know. Um, but this is vocally. And uh, anyway, um, I guess in that regard, I'm just sort of bragging. Uh, but I've always been good at that. But we, we had such a huge sound with just that. It was eight people. We had such a huge sound. When we'd go to competitions, we'd, we'd go up on stage and people were laughing. They were laughing. I really, it would have been so cool had, had like smartphones been out because we, we could have just showed this, you know? And people would have been, wow! I mean, this was the cream of the crop of the singers of, of the school. Cream of the crop. It, it was fucking awesome. We got up there and as soon as they heard us start to sing, the jaws dropped. It was fucking amazing. It was, it was, I, God, I love that so much. That was such an awesome experience. That was, that was my favorite experience was being in that choir throughout all of my public school. Any experience I'd ever had, the very, very best experience was being in that jazz choir with Lauren Pontaine. It, it was awesome. I felt sorry for the guy so much, though, because there was this one point in the time, and yeah, it probably wasn't an appropriate, was not an appropriate response, but he didn't know how to get so many of the others that were in the the lower choir. They have the lower choir and the higher choir. And you couldn't, the rules of the school at the time, he didn't push for anything else because he was new, but the rules of the time were, well, no, if you're a, a freshman or sophomore, you can't join that higher choir. You have to be a junior or a senior. And, uh, man, he wanted me to be in that in that other choir. But uh, but for the lower choir, which anyone could be in, um, I can't remember what they actually called the, the actual differences. It wasn't lower and higher. That's not Those aren't the words they used for that, but it was... 
um, but how people were just not being totally disinterested. And he was stressed about it. And sometimes people would laugh. One time, some kids, they blew up a condom and wrote, I love you on it and stuffed it inside of his piano. And uh, people just, there were some kids that just started really making fun of the guy. Uh, once they realized that, you know, it affected him. And uh, there was one day that he, he went he went into the he went into his office for a moment, closed the shades, and just started crying. And I felt so sorry for him. I felt so sorry for him. He just didn't know how to get them interested, you know, because they weren't in the first place. They were just taking, some of those people were just taking these, these classes just because, well, again, it's an easy class. Look, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an elective. Great. It'll be easy. You know? So, yeah, I, I felt sorry for him, and, but, but man, he, he gave me the best experiences of my life in, in, in high school, I should say, of my life. Yes, of my life, of my life in high school. <laughs> um, it it was it was so awesome being in a group of of that talented of people, and it was so amazing to have that much talent all in one school. Becky Manley, what an amazing voice she had. No idea whether she ever continued that. I think she just wanted to go on to family life and that was just her thing. And then that's fine. But man, her voice. God, I, I just, I still can't get over what she could do. Soprano. But she could sing all the way down to low alto. I mean, she just had a huge range. She's just, just amazing. And, uh, but yeah. Every time we'd go to one of these competitions, there would be people laughing. The judges would be laughing when we came up there like, what, what's this? And then the jaws dropped. It, it was... Yeah. God, that was awesome. That was just so awesome. And I guess I just wanted to share that, so...